Hello and welcome to a session of Steve's Clinic. Today we're going to be talking about your mouthpiece. We're going to be looking at the character of your mouthpiece. What do we mean by that? We're going to be, it is a resonator. It's like you can look it up in the literature. It's often called a quarter wave Hemholtz resonator. And it has a, an, a, an acoustical characteristic that you can look at in either the time domain or the frequency domain. And we're going to look at both. And we're going to understand more about what the mouthpiece actually looks like in both domains and how it affects us when we try to buzz into it or play into it by itself. And let's first talk about the mouthpiece itself. I'm using a Doug Elliott M bass trombone mouthpiece. And it is, um, if you're not familiar with it, it's about like a Lasky 93, something like that, bigger than a Schulke 60. Um, and and it's, it, when you uh, take your mouthpiece and you tap it on your palm of your hand, you're putting pulses of air through it. And in any linear system, the impulse response of the system can be transformed into its frequency response. So what we do is we look at the impulse of one of those pulses that I'm getting on this mouthpiece, and it rings for about mm, 25 milliseconds. So if we look at, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 periods, of cycles of ringing before it exponentially decays into noise. We look at that in the frequency domain and this is what it looks like. It's FFT. We window one of these impulses. We take its FFT. Uh, FFT stands for Fast Fourier Transform. And then we look at its frequency response on a log frequency scale here and a log relative power scale on the y-axis. And what I've done is I've overlaid notes that are familiar to uh, low brass players. In this case, a B flat one would be a pedal B flat on a B flat trombone. On a French horn, it would also be your pedal B flat on your B flat side of your French horn. The B flat two would be second line concert B flat on the B flat staff. The F three would be the fourth line F. The B flat three would be the B flat on top of the staff. Then the B flat four would be the octave above that. And then the F five would be the F above high B flat. We call it high F on trombone. It would be your high concert C on French horn, right? So that note is where I quit labeling it so that we've got a range of notes that we're all fairly familiar with and in the low to mid-range brass world. So when I tap this mouthpiece, it rings for about 25 milliseconds. It does, like I said, 12 or 13 oscillations and its peak energy of that decaying ring is right around B flat four and B natural four. We can see that that is a classic look of a resonator. It's a little bell that's ringing, a little bell that rings for 25 milliseconds when you strike it and it decays after that. So you got a little B flat four bell that's decaying here. And what it's doing is if you blow air in this, you can actually say that this mouthpiece you're looking at its acoustic impulse um, response, or in this case, the acoustic impedance of the mouthpiece. Now, impedance means you're impeding something. What are you impeding? You're impeding the amount of air you need to produce a certain power level output. So if you're playing uh, in this B flat to B natural four range, you will, need, you will put out a lot of power with very little, airflow in your it, it naturally will impede the amount of air because you're getting reflected waves coming back through this mouthpiece which is a resonator if i buzz into this mouthpiece it's easier to get even a little more power the b natural you can hear it going da 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 because the b natural is the most resonant point right in that resonance range and what it's literally doing is it's rejecting frequencies around it. 20 dB, you know, if you take 10 log, 20, if you take 20 log to the base 10 of 10, that's 20 dB. So you're a factor of 10 in amplitude is 20 decibels. So it literally is rejecting amplitudes you're trying to put into it in this range, which is this A flat four, one step, whole step down from B flat four. It's rejecting that amplitude you're trying to put into it with your lips by a factor of 10. If 40 dB would be a factor of 100. So it's literally 
doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to reject anything you put into it other than its quarter wave Helmholtz resonator frequency, which is right there, B flat four and B natural four. So when you try to buzz into this thing other than that, if you try to buzz right in this range, it'll try to pull you back up into here or push you back and down lower. And you can just demonstrate that by going, It just constantly doesn't really want to make allow you to go above or below. That's what it's supposed to do, folks. And if you try to force it to do something it's not supposed to do, you're fighting the laws of physics. It's like fighting gravity. It's not intended to do that. So your mouthpiece is not intended to be a broadband buzzing machine. You are not supposed to put your lips into that mouthpiece and get a constant amplitude of buzz. You are forcing your chops by a factor of 10 or 100 harder to do something that they're not really being allowed to do. The mouthpiece is not allowing you to buzz down here. So you can force it if you want to, but why force it? All you really need to do is learn to free buzz. Now, if I free buzz that note, and I'm gonna start with a free buzz on B flat four, and I've got to kind of gliss up and down and up and down, and you'll hear my free buzzing at a fairly constant power level because it's at a constant load. It doesn't have, it has a, fair, a flat, uh, acoustic impedance line instead of a very highly shaped one with a lot of resonance and a lot of attenuation. It's an atmospheric flat load. So I'm going to start with a free buzz here in B flat four. I went all the way down to uh, F1, below this B flat one. So I went from F1 to F5 on my free buzzing, folks. And that's what you need to learn to do. And you need to get off your mouthpiece to do this. Because when you're free buzzing, your lips are the load. The atmosphere is not any load at all. It's not giving you any reflected wave back. Here you're getting a reflected wave back on these oscillations here. That's allowing you to hold that note forever. If I play this note, B flat four, on the mouthpiece, I could play it. I did it the other day. I could play it for 50 seconds. I did it one day for 65 seconds. I kid you not, because it's using very little air. Acoustic impedance is the ratio of the power level, sound power level output to the amount of airflow going into it. It's impeding the air, which is a good thing. So if I go, I don't feel like I'm blowing at all and I'm getting a lot of nice ring out of it. And I, again, I did that for 65 seconds the other day, guys. I'm not gonna take waste your time holding it here for 65 seconds, but believe me, I'm not lying to you. So you should be able to do that too. But when you're buzzing, you're free buzzing, you're putting your load is the muscles on your lips. You're not getting a reflected wave back that's helping you resonate. So free buzzing is a lot more stress on the chops everywhere, but this is a lot more stress on the chops than free buzzing it with the mouthpiece where it is attenuating it by a factor of 10 to 100. So you're killing yourself, guys, by trying to free buzz below the Hemholtz quarter wave resonance frequency. Stop doing that, okay? So now what I'm going to tell you is about a, a, a tubist that I know. Um, he is a freelance tubist, and he learned in college to free buzz, and he's got fantastic free buzzes, better than what I demonstrated to you. He can all the way go up to like C6. Doug Elliott can go to like F6, it's amazing. This guy can go all the way down to below F1 and go all the way up to, you know, C5, something like that, and he's a tubist. He has fantastic power everywhere. He has fantastic clarity and a sound everywhere. He doesn't burble any notes. He plays notes like every note is like perfectly placed big and full and clear for four octaves on his tuba. He doesn't free buzz. He doesn't do any of the Jacob stuff. He just does, in, uh, he does free buzzing. He doesn't do any mouthpiece style buzzing. He doesn't work on any of the air stuff. He just has fantastic chops. He's got total control of his chops. So therefore, whatever air he puts through them, they're sympathetically vibrating nicely and freely for him. And I'm telling you, guys, if you can do that, it will transform your playing and improve it 95% across the board. Guaranteed money on the table. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.